Let's run down the science news we saw this morning in a bit more detail. Let's begin with a look at Earth's middle level of electromagnetic activity. It absolutely has interplay with the larger global magnetosphere and the smaller fields, the global electric circuit. The gray loops you see on the sides are just a slice of what really wraps all the way around the belly of the planet, and it comes in double layers that help force the equatorial plasma and ion fountain back down to Earth, especially on the day side. The lower level interplay mostly involves pressure and lightning, white high pressure and purple and red low pressure. Let's look northward from Antarctica and see the global electric circuit sent down on high pressure and back up to the ionosphere and low pressure and also along strong convergence lines pointing at the equator. You can see that here between Australia and New Zealand. It is easy to see the arrows interacting at that level, but so do cosmic rays, solar energetic particles, and fluctuations in those arrows near the equator based on CME compression of the magnetosphere and L-shells, those gray things. We've also recently looked at the heartbeat of sunspots, a bubbling pulse that ripples outward towards the penumbra. These one to two minute oscillations underlie three to five minute oscillations in the microwave realm detected above the spots. The one minute cadence shots from GOES here on Earth show about the same one minute pulse rippling from thunderstorm anvils over the United States. It has also shown these heartbeats in tropical storms bubbling on cue. And so now let's turn to the cosmos. Before coming back down into the atmosphere on April 30th, the Rossi satellite detailed a number of X-ray sources in the universe. It noted two different pulses, heartbeats amidst the stars, one 40 seconds apart and another five seconds apart. Again, these are pulses in X-ray brightness, an invisible pulse to our eyes like the microwave sunspot oscillation and unlike the sunspot heartbeat and those we see in thunderstorms, which we do see via their effects on plasma and water vapor respectively. They say that the source of each was a cosmic jet. They say that just like how active galactic nuclei expel galactic material, these would be the smaller versions where a close binary is feeding off its partner. And the heartbeat suggests a nearly constant rate and density and chemical composition of the inflow. We have a key piece of news about predicting earthquakes. You might remember we look for when the global electric circuit can either make a new connection or reverse an existing one. Well, these scientists say the quake motion changed direction in the period just before the large 2011 Japan earthquake, offering a way to possibly use tiny quakes to predict big ones, provided you know which way the ground is moving. We also want to share observational phenomena that fall outside of standard physics, including cosmic rays that produce many effects we see at a galactic level, which is exceptionally interesting. And last but not least, as yet another concern is raised over the 21 centimeter observation, I want you to remember the last two months and the roller coaster the physics world went on over it. An inglorious display of the current state of science. I will see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.